Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we are going to be taking a look at Rengar and giving you everything you need to know to pick him up or refine your playstyle so that you can maximize the impact of this difficult to master champion. We are going to give an overview of runes, items, first clears, objectives, team fights, playstyles and then we are going to review a game where one of the best Rengar players on EU West absolutely dominated a challenger game by getting 25 kills and exerting his will using the alpha kitty playstyle. And that's what we are really focusing on in this video is developing that idea of dominating the enemy mentally as well as the threat you have as the apex predator jungler in the game you're playing. You cannot play Rengar scared, you cannot play Rengar reserved. And for all of you alpha kitties out there, we have, thanks to the league partner program, a Emerald Chroma Pretty Kitty Rengar skin which will give you the champion if you want to start picking up one of the best in the game, the skin as well as the Chroma. And I will be hosting the giveaway on my Camelot page and drawing for multiple winners from North America, EU West and EU Northeast. The links will be in the description and the pinned comment. And now to begin, we don't have as many variations in Rengar's room pages as we've had before. There are still players who like to take fleet footwork, but without a doubt the core two runes that everyone's taking at the top of the tree are Hail of Blades and Electrocute. Hail of Blades gives you a nice early dueling phase, which of course Rengar wants. You want to get snowballing as soon as possible. However, a lot of challenge players who know how to navigate Rengar's early game a bit better and like that Electrocute burst versus Invades. It has nice scaling with AD. So has actually statistically ended up being picked a lot more than Hail of Blades and has a slightly better win rate. The rest of the tree remains the same however, Sudden Impact, Eyeball, even though there were changes, Relentless Hunter, Rengar loves movement speed. And that diversity really comes in that secondary page whereby you have two schools of thought, Transcendence and Gathering the Storm for Upfront Burst, Assassination, AD Scaling, and then you have Boots of Speed and Futures Market for a bit more utility. You get more movement speed from having the magical boots and Futures Market lets you get those items which are quite affordable even sooner than you otherwise could and as soon as Rengar completes that Dusk Blade, you soon you have that item spike to synergize with your ultimate. And on that note, Rengar has a lot of diversity in terms of how he can be built and played. Mostly we're gonna focus on the quintessential Rengar build which is you got your machete to begin, Tiamat, Dusk Blade, Yumu's, boots as you like, some prefer the Ionian boots of lucidity, some prefer to go a bit more for resistances, some even like boots of mobility, that's down to your personal preference and the team comp you're facing, but what is common is Tiamat, Duskblade and Yumus, generally that's core. If you have a team with a lot of CC and when you're diving in, you might want to go that edge of night before the Yumus. However, as I just mentioned, that Edge of Night providing that spell shield that can let you avoid things like Lulu knockups and Janel Tornadoes or Ultimates, really tilting things that all Rengar players hate. That's where you have a split, and that item after your core set, Edge of Night, GA, or the Lord Dominix for that armor penetration. Situationally, a lot of the time you'll have Edge of Night and Lord Dominix as core. You complete that Ravenous Hydra, you sell the machete and get one of the items you haven't yet bought, but those are your core raw burst slash utility spell shield items. This is because you're not really looking to get into some kind of skirmish where you would use the Red Smite, you're just looking to delete people from the map as soon as possible. If you do prefer a more skirmish playstyle, I haven't put the items up, but you know, finishing that skirmish Saber and the Warrior, getting maybe a Black Cleaver. So you're not gonna go for more Burst, you're gonna go a bit more for the Fighter style. I do also like that historically in Season 4 when I spammed like 600 games of Rengar, I was going that Fur Flare, maybe Blade of the Rune King into full tank. I always liked that kind of play style, but these days, most of the time you will see people focusing on that Burst item set. And now for some first clears. I know it's difficult to follow four at a time, but you can always rewatch this just to show you as much as possible. If you're on the red side, usually a bit safer, you'll start your red. You can do a full clear if you like. If you're in a losing matchup early, you don't want to go run into scuttle crabs with your Q and W and then be in a situation where you can't really escape. If you are on the blue side, a lot of Rengar's. Rengar's good on the blue side because you can invade the enemy red, get off some cheese, maybe steal a buff, take some of the raptors. There are a lot of different clears and I'll pop them up on screen for you to look at, but he has such diversity in terms of taking classical clears as well as unique Rengar clears. The only thing I will point out very explicitly is make sure you are charging your Q and your auto attack on the plant behind the red buff so you can have two charges of ferocity by the time the red buff spawns. More empowered ability uptime, faster your clear is going to be. You also have unique ways of jumping to the Krugs using your ward. You don't have to do it as some don't like to waste their ward just to save themselves a few seconds. 
but some Rengars like to get that level 3 as soon as possible so they can actually have a lane impact because the whole goal of Rengar early is stack your bone tooth, get your core items, and start annihilating people. But two important gameplay mechanics I do want to cover just because they're vital to how you use him in that early game. A lot of people complain about not having bushes nearby, but that's flashing into a bush into a leap. Ensure you are using your flash proactively in that case, especially if you're chasing someone down because a flash into bush jump can really surprise enemies when they don't expect that kind of, you know, flash into bush jump. It's like a double flash almost and people consistently underestimate Rengar around bushes. They'll even chase next to the mid lane and get annihilated for free triple kills. I don't know why people forget this all the time. It's just playing around bushes is so important and if you in the early game aren't getting too far ahead, go and grab a kill with a proactive flash. Don't be afraid to miss a bush jump for the risk. It's quite common to do so. And on that note, make sure you are stacking your ferocity. You'll see a lot of players, you know, hitting plants to keep the ferocity cooldown timer up. In case you want to run into someone, go for a gank. You need to make sure that ferocity is stacking and not just walking around blindly with zero. If you are full stack ferocity and there's no way you can actually stack it further or you're heading to counter jungling or you're heading to escape, make sure you just use a Q as this challenger jungler does. Gives you that movement speed boost, gets you around the map faster, that's all we're looking for, really. And finally, before we head into our dedicated gameplay example, remember Rengar can melt towers very, very quickly. He has strong Rift Herald and Dragon Control because of his raw damage. And when it comes to late game team fights, make sure it can seem a bit troll when you're ditching your team, but how to team fight as an assassin. I did a whole video on it. Wait for your windows of opportunity. Don't read too soon and then die don't jump into five people if they're grouping wait for fights to occur hide in bushes pick kills after the fact or in this perfect example if someone tps in and you're fed melt them immediately then you've got a 5v4 use your ultimate look for that flank take out the person who's going to tilt you in this case zillion just kill him don't let him use his ultimate take him away and when you do that and the ivan places the bush well you know, I think the Ivan's kind of just killing his own team when he puts a bush up versus a Rengar. But nonetheless, that's the kind of effect you're looking for. Using your Edge of Night to avoid crucial CC. Taking out targets that can inhibit your ability to kill primary targets. And ideally, getting a pick off before the actual fight occurs. You're not looking for raw 5v5s. And if you do have that, skirt the edges, wait for the right time, and pick your moment. And now for our 25 kill challenger game. Naturally, we won't analyze every single minute of it. I just like this one because it didn't start off super, super well. Oftentimes, you have a 25 kill Rengar. You think, well, he must have gotten a kill in an invade. He must have collected some kind of bounty or something at the beginning of the game that let him really hard control the game. And in this one, it wasn't quite that way. So he begins by going off for a cheeky invade. As I said, when you're blue side Rengar, you can always go and look for something. If your top lane is with you, gives you a nice angle of approach, you've got a lot of bushes around that red buff that you can use. Primes his Q, hits an auto on the plant, steals the red buff, steals the raptors and leaves a baby. You'll notice that they've kind of gotten wind of this, even though they didn't have core vision. They just felt like they could invade and there's a huge skirmish between both teams going around. Even though the Evelyn does actually get the red buff, the Rengar now has decided to flank and try and cut her off. He doesn't bite off more than he can chew, rotates around. And he tries to fight the Evelyn over the Raptor camp. He's able to outsmite her purely because the Evelyn used to smite on the Krugs, just trying to survive in the earlier skirmish. And I would have put an animation so you could have seen that. And now this is where things can fall flat. He goes for the flash bush jump, but you're level three. It's the early game. You don't have insane burst damage and he actually just dies. So that's quite sad. Now on the other end of the spectrum, you would have noticed that the Mundo stole his blue buff. So this is not a very good beginning for the Rengar and this is why I like this game because it highlights what you need to do in less than optimal circumstances in order to get yourself fed. Now a lot of Rengars in this case might feel a bit hesitant to put on the Alpha Kitty show but you have to turn it on and keep it on always and that includes flash, jumping and dying. That's part of the process. They know you're serious now. And so as his blue buff has been stolen, his top laner would have communicated that. He could have seen it himself when Mundo went to the top lane. He knows that Evelyn was low HP and had no flash after his death in the mid lane. Meaning even if she stays out to do full clear, she's going to be able to survive that given that it's Evelyn. But she's not going to have the resources to go and conduct a gank of her own. Knowing this, Rengar takes his Krugs and immediately League of Lane ganks the bottom lane. They know from the early skirmish there are no flashes. And whenever you know there are no flashes in a side lane as Rengar... You love that lane gank. 
and he picks up a kill on the Brom. Now, because of this, he ventures into the river to see if the Scuttle Crab is up, and of course it is, as Evelyn has done a clear of her own jungle you would have seen on the small screen. Takes that crab, and now instead of retreating back into his jungle, Alpha Kitty goes back down to the bottom lane and conducts the same gank again, and they're able to secure a kill on the Kaiser. So this is huge for his bone tooth, of course. And now naturally, if the enemy jungler knows what they're doing, depending on the MMR range you're in, they will go and counter jungle your top side. Now obviously laners, like the Fizz and the Jarvan, won't collapse on the Evelyn knowingly and kill them and take them off the map. That probably won't happen in most of our cases, however, the effect is the same. She stole the Gromp, and Mundo, after Rengar comes back from his kills, takes his raptors, and then heads to his top side jungle, has just snuck away his wolf. So the effect is the same, right? He lost his Krugs, and he lost his big wolf which means he's been denied that experience quite heavily, but because of his two ganks in the bottom lane, he is up in XP, he's okay with his gold amounts, and he's stacked his bone tooth. That's all you're looking for. Don't get stuck in this AFK farm idea that you have to do this Rengar. I know some people do it because you need, you need to play the map, right? If the map calls for you to AFK farm a little bit, get level six before you can do much, so be it. But this particular player loves to be active early game, loves to go for those lane ganks, stacking their bone tooth and using Futures Mark to get his power spike sooner. And now on that end, he of course has nothing on that side of the map, his red buff is spawning, he can go and secure that and take control of his own jungle. Now, because of the denial he's had from the Mundo, from the Evelyn, he's not quite at that level 6 stage. So he moves down to the Krugs and actually there's about to be a 4-man gank on the bottom lane from the Zed and the Evelyn, which they love to do, and if you don't have vision, can always surprise the bot lane, which, let's face it, is always the case. However, he dazzles the Zed with his mating dance, jumping in and out of the bushes. Zed doesn't want to waste his ultimate because guess what? He knows that Rengar is going to kill him anyway, and the bot lane is now aware of his presence. He also uses a very nice bush jump to the mini Krug to avoid a Kaiser W, and then as Evelyn comes in to try and assassinate him, he flashes at just the right time uses that W for a little bit of heal, which gives him enough to jump back in and help his team secure a kill in Evelyn. So, very tight situation he found himself in, but through good mechanics with Rengar, quick decision making, good reflexes, cat-like reflexes if you wish, he's able to survive and come away with even more kills, stacking their bone tooth. And so now, despite not having the best start, because of the double lane gank in the bottom lane, because of that nice display he just had picking up another kill and assist, he's actually in a very, very good spot and you can feel the confidence when he starts to move around the map now. The Mundo is still stealing his crap, so everyone collapses and finally kills the good doctor. In this case, he does not go where he pleases. Rengar begins to invade the Evelyn. He begins to walk into the mid lane. Oh, hello, Evelyn from stealth. Let me just kill you as you try and shoo in on the Fizz. Oh, look, the Zed altered me. Doesn't matter, you do no damage to me anyway. So that Alpha Kitty, the behavior, his body language, the damage he's starting to dish out at this stage already, is enough to sort of frighten the enemy from actually doing too much to him because as soon as they get close, he will be able to chunk them down. And that's what I'm talking about. Even though he had a slower beginning of the game, his presence on the map and his ability to just to go in and win these tight skirmishes or just completely turn a fight because he's Rengar is now a mental thing that the enemy team has to overcome as well. And when you've reached that stage, it's important to now take control of the enemy's jungle and take them out of the game completely. We've talked a lot about this recently, but with Rengar, it's almost you have to do this or you're not really using him to his full potential. After shoving that wave mid, the Zed's low HP so he can't really afford to go in, Rengar knows that the blue buff is spawning for the enemy and that Evelyn most likely is gonna rotate down and try and take that. What beats in Evelyn's camo? Well, you seeing them. He uses the plan to jump over the bush, Evelyn's right there on time, uses the ultimate to try and escape, but it's around a bush, so it really wasn't a good decision by her, and she gets taken out. So she respawns after Rengar kills her in a counter gank, then he invades her and kills her again as she goes for a blue buff. He may be wearing a onesie, but his knife is definitely sharp. And I will speed talk a little bit of how you close a game out using this kind of lead as Rengar, but the clips will show up on screen now, even if a little bit out of sync with what I'm saying. But the key is now to give that unrelenting pressure, sticking around, you know, tower dive the bottom lane, take the tower, you do take them very quickly, but don't overstay in a greedy way or you might fall like he does here. After that, clear a little bit of your jungle, but don't fall into this thing of full clearing. You want to help your lanes. As soon as you see the bot lane being towered over again, top lane, alt, go up there, finish them off, take another tower, go sit in the enemy jungle, wait for someone to unsuspectingly just walk through thinking, hey, they got a double kill top lane, he took the tower, he's probably on Herald. No, you're in the bush and you're gonna take another one out. 
If you're in low and mid MMOs playing Rengar, don't usually advise it, but if you are and you're good enough with Rengar, go sit in those bushes when you're fed, scan it and wait. People will not ward, they will just walk in and it gives you free kills. Otherwise, take the Herald, take the Dragon, chase down the Mundo, see a fight somewhere else, activate the Herald. You see a Kai'Sa coming, but you have low HP, your Rengar, ult and kill her. You have burst, you have that heal, you have the life steal. You're not going to die when you're this far ahead. So don't underestimate the damage you can dish out even in tight situations. And when you try and exert that dominant playstyle onto the enemy throughout all phases of the game, not just early game, throughout all phases, it's about taking objectives once you get a little bit fed and then completely zoning them and making them afraid of walking anywhere beyond vision or towers. Naturally, the ignorant and the bad will do that anyway. And as Rengar, enjoy your feast. Go grab more kills. So best of luck to any of you who pick up Rengar. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Please like, share and comment if you did. Subscribe for more League of Legends and jungle videos coming very soon. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.